Hey everybody, it's Ben here. I just wanted to give you an update on the latest on my projects. I've uh, been busy lately. Going on two weeks ago, I went out to Ohio to the Craig Vetter Fuel Economy Challenge that was out there. Um, that was in the Columbus, Ohio area. Uh, I drove out there, oh, kind of a long drive, but I had the Vectrex in the back of my little uh, Chevy S10 pickup truck. Um, I did get a chance to uh, go in the Vetter Challenge with the Vectrix, which was pretty cool. And, you know, I've never done any of this kind of stuff before. I've never entered a fuel economy challenge. Uh, and this was all at this big uh, motorcycle event. And I'd never really been at one of those before either with a uh, big racetrack and dirt uh, set up. Uh, it was pretty crazy. Um, but attending the Vetter Challenge was pretty cool. And one thing that was kind of neat about it was it was kind of the first... Um, sort of equivalent of a real world road trip. Uh, I've mostly been using the Vectrix just for short trips. I did do 91 miles on a single charge, but that was over a number of days, a number of short trips. For the Vetter Challenge, it was basically 70 miles each direction, going from our start point to a, a motorcycle museum uh, and then back. So I figured, hey, if I could get to the motorcycle museum, I could get some charging in there or you know, at least do half the challenge instead of the whole thing. Uh, unfortunately, I was only able to make it, uh, I think it was 55.8 miles. Uh, the one place that I could have had a chance to recharge, um, we didn't. And the other thing is even though there was 240 volt uh, charging available there, I really wouldn't be able to take advantage of it. My stock Vectrix charger uh, can use 240 volts, but it's still uh, watt limited uh, 1500. So we're talking, you know, an hour of charging to be able to go another 10 miles on that motorcycle. So uh, a couple of things. One is I did get a um, an aerodynamic fairing from Craig Vetter that's literally sitting in my backyard right now. Um, so hopefully I can improve the aerodynamics on the cycle. Other thing I want to do is improve the charging. So what I did was I got myself a couple of Meanwell power supplies. Now these are not technically chargers. They're power supplies. You put AC in the one end, you get a certain voltage DC out the other. Uh, these ones, uh, this is the HLG series. These are 320 watts each. And this is a 48 volt power supply. And you're probably saying, wait, Ben, uh, your old electric motorcycle, that was 48 volts. The Vectrex, that's, uh, that's higher. Yeah, you're right. So um, that's why I've got more than one of those power supplies. Over here, I got three of them that I can rig up in series. And then I also have a second set of three. So basically I should be able to do three in series and then another set of three uh, in series in parallel to that first set. Um, so basically that's gonna be around 2000 watts of charging on top of the 1500 watts of charging that I already have on the Vectrix. So that's gonna be like 2.5 kilowatts of charging. Now that's not huge, you know, there's some guys out there with some really crazy big chargers. Um, I know on one of the forums, uh, Dr. Bass made a charger using a couple of uh, RSP 2000 chargers, um, but there's some disadvantages there too, including the fact that those are not uh, fully waterproof chargers. And hey, it was raining in the Vetter Challenge. Uh, these power supplies here, they're nice and waterproofed and uh, sealed up. They got little plugs over the voltage adjustment. So let's uh, come in close and uh, take a look at that. Okay, so we have here three of these Meanwell HLG 320H480As, or uh, uh, 48A. 48 means it's a 48 volt nominal system, and the A actually refers to the form factor. So if you look at these, they're totally sealed. There's no fans on them or anything. There's a short pigtail on either end. Uh, they're sealed up to the weather, and there's an adjustment for uh, current and voltage, and those have a little rubber plug. They're actually really nice. They're very silicone-y, and it's kind of three rings on there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, so those should be pretty nice and weather resistant, which will be good for an outdoor vehicle. Um, with the drawing, it shows which is line, neutral, and ground on here. So what I did is I just rigged uh, the three of them up just temporarily with wire nuts and then ran that out to a, uh, a plain old cord here so I can plug them in and then test the output. Uh, and sure enough, I get about 48 volts out, but when I pull out this plug, uh, there's a potentiometer in there. I, I can adjust it down to, oh, 43 volts and up to something like 52 volts.
Now on this end, what I did was um, I just connected these in series, red to black, red to black, and then put my voltmeter on the end. And what I'm gonna do now is uh, just plug this in. And with the voltmeter in place here, um, I've got each of the three of these set to 50 volts and connected in series. I am getting 150 volts out of this. Um, I'm running uh, 18 of those leaf cells um, and the maximum charging I would want, maximum voltage is in the neighborhood of 151 volts. Uh, so this is roughly set up correct for charging the Vectrix right now. Now one thing I'm going to have to figure out is I'm going to need to get myself some good um, waterproof connections, something uh, much nicer than uh, just wire nuts. I think I'll be able to use some weatherproof uh, butt splices on this end with some uh, heat shrink on it. I'm not quite sure the best way right here of uh, connecting that all up. I guess I'll solder it and, and wrap it, use some sort of a waterproof tape or something like that. But that's the general idea. And then what I can do is set up one string to um, like a 100% charge and the other string to like an 80 or 90% charge. And then just by uh, choosing which one I plug in, I should be able to determine how high I'm charging the battery pack um, also, I want to experiment with adjusting the current because I think if I just adjust the current down on one of them because they're in series, um, that will, will limit the current of all three, but I, I do have to double check that first. Uh, the other thing that I've got going on here is if I have one string with the current turned down, it's going to be pulling fewer watts from the wall. So, for example, in those cases where uh, maybe I have access to an electric outlet and I can charge overnight, but that uh, outlet is on the same um, uh, circuit with something else where I, I couldn't charge at 1500 watts, which is what my built-in charger needs. I'd be able to uh, take these, turn them down, charge at 500 watts, 800 watts, whatever it has to be. Um, so I'll have a lot more flexibility in charging it. So that's my general thoughts on doing charging for this project. If you have any uh, ideas, comments, suggestions, please let me know. If you have a favorite uh, tip or trick for weatherproofing electrical connections, I would absolutely love to hear that. And uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel or come check out my projects at 300mpg.org. See you next time.